teach you want to burn the Quran. So if if a particular freedom leads to uh, unrest, violence, disturbance, okay, if a particular freedom. Firstly, let's let us talk about freedom. Do you think there is absolute freedom of speech in the world anywhere today? Um, no. In an, in a perfect atheistic society, in your uh, utopia or your you know fairyland, <laughs> let's, let's call it fairyland, atheistic fairyland where all atheists, all good people have come together and they are now living by atheism in this fairyland, okay, this with, with my, in, in my little pony land, right, where there are rainbows and there are green trees, everyone's happy-go-lucky, right? In that particular land, would you have absolute freedom of speech? So there is no such thing as an atheistic world because atheism is nothing but a lack of belief in God. Okay. What you're describing is maybe a world that is living by enlightenment values because atheism doesn't offer any values. It's just a lack of belief in God and nothing else, right? right. So in my in the world, so, that so why are you burning the Quran then? If it doesn't offer values, because I'm you, not just an atheist. Okay. There are many things that uh, atheism is just one of the things I am. So, I'm also a humanist. I also believe in enlightenment values. That's on top of my atheism. Good. It doesn't come with. Let's my talk atheism. about humanism now. Let's say we are in this fairy land governed by humanists, like you thought. In that humanist society, would you have absolute freedom of speech? Um, I wouldn't have. There would no. I'm not absolute. There's certainly. So how are you different to Britain? How are you different to a Sharia so, state, no. a, a state governed so, by Sharia Islamic law? Because they have inciting, certain inciting yeah. violence. I think might be like if I say, like if I say, let, let, no, let's not go to the details. No, that's let's what establish I the basis first. You, as a humanist, would not allow well, absolute the, freedom of speech. Depends on what you mean by absolute freedom of speech. Okay. I mean but, by absolute. Um, so, I mean absolute so, freedom of speech. No, okay. So freedom of speech should be allowed. On all absolute freedom of speech should be allowed unless it breaks the other laws that is not about speech. You know what I mean? Who decides? Who decides what's bad and what's good? Who decides? Uh, people. In, in, a, in people. Based on data. People okay. Based if, on data. If, if a group of people come together, let's say a million people come together, and they decide that we want to slaughter all uh, uh, all Muslims no, no. or all Jews or for, like what happened in Germany. Social consensus. Would that be okay? It's not based on consensus. It's based on it's based on making decisions based on data and evidence and on what maximizes well-being in a society. Okay, let's so, say a majority in, that, in a no, humanist society. It's not a majority based. It's based on evidence. Okay. It's based on evidence and data to come up with values and laws that maximizes well-being in a society. Who defines well-being? in a society? Who defines what's good, what's bad in a society? Who defines that? The people that have studied it, the people that have good. expertise. Now that I'm, I'm posing a question, those people who have studied uh, people we in Islam call Ahlul Halli Wal Aqsa. We have a concept of learned people as well right. who define what is, uh, uh, who right. interpret the law of God. Wait, wait. Now that your learned people have come together and they have come out with an idea and that idea is for example, like I gave you examples, kill all the Jews, God forbid, like the like the Germans did in the 1940s, or kill all the Muslims, right? Like what was happening in Burma. That's, that's and, for maximizing well-being. But if they decide, yeah, if they, they're, if wrong. they're wrong. They're wrong. But okay. But then, is it still law then? Um, no, because they didn't use evidence. But they didn't. Come, no, they anything. they do all that. Let's say they they come to a conclusion. How, how is killing Jews maximizing well-being? Obviously, it's not. This is hurting people. Okay. The whole point of coming. Hitler. To how Hitler rationalized the killing of the Jewish people was just like that. He gave certain reasons, some research he produced, and he realized that the Jews are doing X, Y, and Z. Therefore, they deserve to be killed. This is how Hitler argued, right? And many German people, learned people, scientists, philosophers, uh, social scientists. All people came together and they kind of agreed with Hitler and lo and behold, we have the Holocaust. So your reasoning that in a humanistic society or in a humanist society, 
Learned people will come together and they will make laws or they will tell us what's good and what's bad. What if they make a blunder? What 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 if they, if they make a mistake? What's going to happen then? Well, I'm talking about coming up with laws that maximize this whole thing, not something that causes the whole thing. What? What? Okay. Well, what? If they decide if you, if you well being, want, well being is to get rid of a certain thing. If you want to talk about what ifs, right? I mean, you have to apply the equality standard to what you're, what you're talking about. Because people that have used God's okay. law I'll give you as a source, people that use God's law as a source of, uh, you know, coming up with laws, they have caught, they have resulted in her You're her still not listening to my question. Okay. I'm saying, let's say, I'll give you a specific example. If, what there is, is a society with disabled people. Right. It's an atheistic society that doesn't believe in God. Right. And disabled people are seen as a burden by, let's say, eight out of ten atheist researchers in that humanist society. Eight, eight come up with, a, with an idea that we put these disabled, mentally retarded, okay, uh, people, those who do not feel, um, you know, don't, those who don't, don't have cognition, how's we do. How the humanist Okay, so you say... Wait, wait, yeah. wait. Yeah. They come to this conclusion, these eight people out of ten, the majority, they say that it would be uh, sympathy or it would be mercy for them to die. So let's, let's put them all down. Let's put them down. Okay, eight now agree and they have grounds to say what they are saying. Because what's they right? will give the reasons. Uh, killing them would save X amount of food, X amount of oxygen, X amount of space, beds. We need beds, we need more water. So, because they don't have cognition, no. they're not really doing anything in the society. Wait, wait, let me finish my question. Therefore, we should kill them all and get rid of them because they're not, they're not, they are not doing anything productive for the society. They are disabled, they're mentally retarded. Eight out of ten decide to do that and they give overwhelming evidence to support their claims. What do you say in that case? I mean, I know you're trying to be as politically correct uh, or, or morally correct as possible. I, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. First of all, if you're an atheist, morality is an issue for you. Big, big problem. No, no, I'm not saying you don't have morality. Try to understand where I'm coming from. I'm saying, as an atheist, you cannot claim to believe in objective morality. Morality becomes relative. If you're an atheist, morality becomes relative to people, to cultures, to feelings, to sentiments, to uh, to, to to land. But you, you know. Okay, well, which one do I want me to respond to? The first one or this one? First one. Okay. Um, that's what what you describe by the very definition of humanism. It's not humanistic. I was talking about people that believe in humanism coming up uh, coming up. About. If people are deciding to kill off people because they're mentally retarded, by the very definition of humanism, they're not human. By okay. the very definition of humanism, the people that are deciding... Is, is there a problem with atheism? I mean, is, does atheism... That's atheism, what atheism is, you know, that's separate. A, a religious person can be a humanist. Okay. Okay? Humanism means just looking for the maximizing the well-being of okay. humans. Who defines uh, humanism? What What is human... Give me a definition of humanism. Humanism is like the, sim the simple version of it is looking after humans and maximizing their well-being. That's Islam. That's not humanism. We believe in that. So okay. how is humanism special? Why do I, as a Muslim, why do I have to follow so, humanism? What's so special about humanism? Give me a definition of humanism. So what, what, what we believe is that yeah. divine authority or faith is not a good source of figuring out... That's what atheism. That's not humanism. That's well, atheism. Well, as an atheist, yeah. I believe so that the, the best human... The best is humanism is atheism? atheism? Um, okay, there's a disagreement between humanists. I think that human. I believe that religious people can be humanists, right? Okay. A lot of humanists think that they. they so can. what is the? What so is my atheism is impacting my humanism. Okay. okay. My so humanism and atheism are separate, but my atheism is impacting my humanism. So give in me a, a way. definition of humanism. Uh, what is humanism? Human, but based on I only give you a definition. And what you is said it? and you said based on my definition which is maximizing the well being of humans, right? That's Islam. Yeah, you said that's Islam, yes. right? But based on my atheism, I think the best way to maximize the well being of humans is to look at evidence based on the objective reality rather than uh, divine authority and based on faith. I agree. I agree, but the Islam doesn't go against that in any shape or form. So why, uh, why are you a humanist? Because the ulama and the religious leaders, they are looking, the main source of what solutions for them is a book based on, that came from the heavens. Right, right? but, but it, 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 rather it, than looking at data. And belief is that the Quran 
and the prophetic tradition maximizes human well-being. And we, we agree yeah, with that. And we accept that's, that. We, that's, that's why we're Muslims. That's the part I disagree with. Okay. I, by the way, and I, and I appreciate that, by the way. Like, the, even if I don't think they're going to the right source, the fact that the intention is to maximize the well-being of humans, I sympathize with that. I just don't agree with the source of data. They're going to the... Do How do you understand that source of data? Right, so... The, the, this why, is why, why don't you understand it the way Muslims understand it? I mean, because you... I don't believe in God, and they're going to God for the answers. I'll no, but, but if they are Muslims, and they are doing good deeds, as you said, there are oh, many yeah. good Muslims in the world, right. well, I'm saying they are good because of Islam. And oh. if they have a particular interpretation of Islam, which is good, which is good, why don't you follow that good interpretation uh, over a bad one, which you which you have conceived? So that that's what that's the disagreement. I don't. I think they're they're good people not because of Islam. I think they're good people in spite of Islam. Okay, good. I, Let's right. talk about it. Right. If Muslims doing charity, why are they doing it? Because they because they have sympathy. Because no. they're good people. No. Yeah, they will tell you we are doing charity. Zakat is an obligation in Islam. Okay. We are doing charity because Islam makes makes it obligatory. Oh. So you can't now divorce the two. You can't so, separate the two. You so, can't have your cake and eat it. So I, I I think Muslims are good are good enough that if you take Islam away from them, they will still do charity. Okay. I said okay, and I think if if somebody like let's say a uh, Christian, so, so let's, let's say Christian. Right? Okay, then then, then I have then I have another counter claim the most charitable community in the world currently is the Muslim community by statistics even in Britain no it's an atheist no yeah. you, oh, come on. I have you, data for that listen, I have data for that listen, no. the problem listen listen do you know how much charity Muslims do every Ramadan do you know the, you know the it outweighs all the charities do you know uh, the problem with the atheist charities is that they don't atheists don't go label themselves as atheist charities Right, so, so we don't. They, they, when so, they don't, so, so when we they, don't we, have the data. No, we do, we do, we, but we don't have it. We don't have it in one charity. Like we don't have an atheist charity. So how do you calculate the, the data if they don't? Well, if they don't record it. No, because okay. as atheist charity. No, because when some, when they donate, when when polling based on people's beliefs, but they don't po they don't donate like to, to atheist charity. They donate to like doctors. But how do you calculate? What the, how do you calculate results based with the polling, Muslim community? Based on polling and opinions, but we don't have an atheist charity. We, we no, but I, you're still not trying. I mean, yeah. how do you calculate the charity if, they, if they're not giving it to atheist okay. charities, or if there are no atheist charities with the label atheist charity? Right. How do we know the charity done is by atheists? But because polling and questioning, and you know, like there's so many data, census data, polling data, how much you give to charity last month, what do you believe in, stuff like that. So, but so, so, how many atheists do you have? You said the I largest. I don't community. have the data, right? And right. like I memorized, but that's, okay, but that's not important. Yeah, but, but do you know that Muslims are the the most charitable community okay, in the world and it. in Britain in particular? Let's give that. Okay, that means Muslims are good people. Okay, right? now why are the Muslims the most charitable? people in the world why why are they separate why are they different to Christians why are they different to the Jewish people I mean I'm not saying the Christians and the Jews don't do charity they do they are they are all very kind people of course atheists of course of course right I'm saying why are the Muslims distinctively charitable so here's the thing I think that um, if a, the, um, let's say two types of Muslims right one Muslim is giving to charity, but if you Islam, take Islam away from them, they will still give to charity. Okay? How, then, how can no. you make that claim when we you have know, clear no, data no, to show us you didn't, that you're not Muslims? No, no, you're not listening. Yeah. Right? I, let's say the second type of Muslims, there's two types of Muslims, that is giving to charity because of Islam, and if you take Islam away from them, they will stop giving to charity. Okay? Two types of Muslims, one of them will continue giving to charity, and the other one will stop giving to charity. To me, Where's the evidence for that? No, I'm, Where's the evidence for that? I'm not, we just made a claim that no, no, certain I, Muslims would, 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 would give charity even if Islam didn't exist. No, from all the Muslims in the world, don't, don't you agree that some Muslims will continue giving to charity even without Islam? I don't know. What well, we do know, no, what we do know, yeah, I don't know about, my, my evidence, is, that's my a evidence, hypothetical question. My evidence is all the ex-Muslims that continue giving to charity. Okay. Okay. I, so, my argument is they no, are influenced I, by Islam. I haven't even made my point. Right. Okay, my point is that the Muslims that are giving to charity because they want to give to charity okay. are better people because they're not just following a command. They want to give because they... So, so because, somehow Muslims are, Muslims are more compassionate? 
Muslims globally no, are more. I'm just saying from the from the. I don't know. Maybe maybe they are. Maybe they okay, are. Why? But I don't know. But just, but, 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 amazingly. One thing common about these charitable people from Morocco to Bangladesh is that they are Muslim. By the way, I don't and, know, and, I don't know and, if the data you're saying is true, by the way, because I can't check it right now. But okay. I, I, maybe it's true. I'm not Go and check it. it. Come back to me if I'm wrong. The most charitable community in Britain, and, uh, proportionally speaking, mm -hmm. not that the British people are not charitable, the British people are absolutely generous. They are very, very compassionate people. But, if it's, but proportionally speaking... Is it generous if it's mandatory? Sorry? Is it generous if it's mandatory? If you're giving because you have to give, are you actually being generous? Yes. How I'll is tell that you generous? Why. Because because you can you can refuse to follow the command. So this is where the connection. But you're sinning. But you're sinning. This is where the connection is. So they are generous because of Islam. Because Islam makes them but generous. That's it, the point I'm making. Is it genuinely gener out of generosity? Yes. If you're just trying to avoid sinning. If Islam commands, if the Quran commands, be generous, and Muslims choose to be generous, they are being generous because of the command. Because God, as they see it, commands them to be generous. Therefore, they are generous because of Islam. You can't make that distinction. You can't separate the two. I think and you're somebody, trying to separate the two. I think somebody is generous if they're giving out of their out of kindness. Okay, let's not step, because they're following let's, commands. Let's go step by step. Does Islam command to do charity? Yes, I can. Comes as I can. Yes, charity. Right. Right. Comes as I can. And Muslims do charity. Right. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, a natural outcome, a natural uh, conclusion of the calculation would be that the Muslims are doing it because they are told in Islam to do charity. And when they say we are giving zakat, zakat is an Islamic concept. So when they give 2.5% of the wealth around the world, whether they're Saudis, Qataris, Pakistanis, British Muslims, or American Muslims, when they give zakat, zakat is Islamic. Okay, wait, let me finish. So that zakat is Islam. You cannot say oh, Islam is bad, but the Muslims are good. Because Muslims do charity because no, they are good actually, naturally. I can say I'm it, saying they are good because they are doing zakat, which is Islam. Actually, I think the charity. I, I, I get that, but I think the, the charity that the non-religious people are doing is way more effective and better charity than the one that religious. It's people a claim. Are doing. It's a good claim. There's yeah. a blue monkey flying there. Can you see it? Yeah. It's a claim. Yeah, so but, I, I, you will have to. I, no, I acknowledge that I might be wrong. Okay. Yeah, okay. The, but but because. Based on my experience, the money that goes towards zakat is not used as efficiently as and effectively. That's for a growth. separate question. No, no. But Again, you're saying, you're, look, you're still not. I'm trying to tell you, Muslims who give zakat, yeah. which is charity, which is compassion and generosity, they are doing it because of Islam. There's a direct link between between yeah, the action but, and the teaching. So you cannot separate the two. You can't but, say Islam but just, is not good and the Muslims are good. Muslims are good because they want to be no, good. No, but that's not a good thing. That's not good charity. What do you mean that's not a good charity? Well, okay, okay. I, come, I come from a country, I come from Iran, right? So I don't know where other places are, or like, right? But the, the money that Iran collects from Khomsa Zakat... By the way, Iran no, does not represent Muslims around the world. You, you, you know that, right? I know, but every, Iran, everyone... Iran is following a minority view on Islam, almost, which is less than 10% of Muslims. Muslims, and, if and you want to look at Muslims, and, look it, outside Iran, of Iran. Iran doesn't it, represent it, Saudi Arabia doesn't represent it, right? No, it does. It does? To, to people do. Not the government, we, the people do. Okay, there but, are, there but are the Saudi charitable. government, the Saudi government doesn't represent Islam, right? I'm saying Saudi people follow Orthodox Islam. They do? And yeah, they do. So Wahhabi they follow, Islam is good? I don't know what you mean by Wahhabi. Okay. What do you mean by Wahhabi Islam? Now, okay. this is, this no, no, okay. no, no, I want to talk. I'm, okay. I'm a very, I'm a very open okay. person. You want to talk my, about, my, my, you want to talk my, about no, no, the, the my, tree is green. Let's talk about that. No, Wahhabi, what's Wahhabi? My, my point is that let's talk about Wahhabi. My Islam. point is that Muslims disagree on many, many different things, right? And all Muslims are so do atheists, so do monkeys. No, but so, you're not so do elephants. You said you're open to having. Sorry? Elephants so no, sometimes they fight. Have you not seen two elephants no. fighting? My, my point is that Muslims... So even, even animals disagree. My Humans disagree more because they have more rationality. My point is yeah. that Muslims, they all agree that the Islam that they're following is the only true Islam no. and all other Muslims no. have got it wrong. Orthodox Muslims who are educated and they know what their faith is, um, they're the they, they, they are. You, you, you refuse to look at them. 
for some reason you can't see them. I, I mean, when we show them to you, that look at these generous Muslims giving charity, 2.5% of their wealth. Look at these generous Muslims taking care of orphans around the world. Look at them doing work in Africa, in South America, right, in, right. In, in all the countries. When there are floods, Muslims are there, right? right? So, so, so are the Americans. Muslims are there more. No, I'm saying, uh, I'm saying, I'm no, saying. No, no, no. Actually, that's a very good example yeah. because you know, I, I, I'm not a supporter of United States foreign policy. Okay, I have a lot of. I'm, I'm very critical of United States foreign policy. But when it comes to aid, when it comes to the country that is there first, when there's a when there's a national disaster that happens with the highest amount of resources and the highest number of experts, the United States comes there the first, and the United States leaves the la the last. I think I th the longest, right? I agree. Right. Americans are very generous in charity. They do a lot of charity. Even the government, the U.S. aid, no doubt, they send their wow, jets with with wheat and food and all of that. Wow. You see that because that's what the news I, shows you, right? I see. But I have well. seen. I've, I've seen what happens on the ground when there were floods in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. When people got devastated, or when there was there was a huge earthquake not very long ago, a few years back. Okay, people, people, they left their homes, they filled trucks with provisions. Not that others wouldn't do it, of course, others do also. But Muslims, for some reason, and why am I saying Muslims again specifically? Because it is part of their faith. It is the third pillar of Islam to do charity. This is the connection you're not, you're not making, you're failing to make it. I'm trying to make that connection. Others also do charity. Christians do it, the Jewish people do it, the Americans do it, the Israelis do it. Let me go far. The Israelis do it, right? They do charity. I am saying the Muslims do charity specifically because it's part of their faith. Okay. And you're you're you're, you're breaking that connection for some reason. But, okay, but maybe because it's, it's, it's simple. It's maybe baby. It's baby I, logic. Okay, so if you're willing to make that connection, are you willing to make the connection of all the horrible things that Muslims do? Let's to, talk about that. To, to okay. Islam? Yeah, let's talk about them. Let's see what the faith says. It, here, let's make the connection. Absolutely fair. This is a very good point. So you're. You're telling me that I'm making a connection between a good deed and a good teaching in Islam. Why don't I make the same connection when Muslims do horrible things and the teachings of Islam? Let's make that connection. Talk about it. Which horrible deed do you, you want to talk about? Rape? Muslims so, raping? You want to make? Show me anywhere in Islam where it says rape. Well, show me anywhere in Islam where it says kill innocent people. Once they innocent people. Show me anywhere in Islam rob people, steal from people. Anywhere, lie to people. Anywhere, go on. So let's start with the killing of. So, yeah, yeah. Before we do, do we both agree that Islam teaches good things and Muslims do those good things? Do you, do we both agree? Well, I I have to see more data. I right now believe. I just I, told you. No. The third pillar of Islam is charity. I believe. Therefore, Muslims do charity. Well, is there a connection? I believe that yeah. Muslims are good enough to do that even without Islam. But maybe I'm wrong. I will go look and do more research okay. to see if it's... Isn't good. this ironic that you want to quickly make a connection between evil deeds I will, and some teachings of I'm Islam? Quite, you want to jump to that opportunity, but when we want to uh, we want to deal with the first point... I'm examining it. I'm, okay. not, I make, I'm, not, I'm not making a conclusion on either of these points. Right. So I'm considering your position on that, and I'm going to go think about okay. it. Let's, and I'm going to... No, no, no. I, I haven't made a conclusion about the first one or the second okay. one. Okay, let's I'm, talk... I'm let's be, I'm be, examining both of them with you. Let's be simple. Right. Let's be simple. I mean, yeah. But let's go. To let's the be simple. Part. The Prophet said, the Prophet of Islam said, "Buni al Islam wa ala khamsin. Shahadat in la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah wa ikami salam wa itai zakat." The Prophet of Islam taught, Islam is based upon five. Number one, proclamation of faith. Number two, prayer. Yes, Number know, three, compulsory, compulsory charity. So, you, so you accept the prophet taught that? Well, allegedly, yes. What do you mean allegedly? Well, because the, okay, the, let's go to the Quran then. No, Does no. the Quran teach it? Yes. 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 Okay. Quran teaches it. Right. Now, do Muslims give zakat? Yes. Yes. Okay. But that's a bad. Why are the, why are Muslims giving zakat? Um, well, because of Islam, but I think... Thank you. Well, Let's move but, on now no, to the next point. But I that's think, it, that's it. This is all I no, want No, no, no. The yeah. point is that I think without Islam, they would have given to another form of charity. You're still not getting it. I'm saying... But let me go... I'm saying... 
zakat is charity muslims do zakat specifically okay. by calculating the right amount they give it in charity why i believe why because of his love thank you I, Now, let's move no, let's move to some evil stuff now the addition okay. of her to that is i think muslims who still give to charity without his love we're not talking about that okay where we are talking about what muslims are doing for islam right. or because of islam right, sounds good okay. let's go to the other part okay now now we are we are in agreement after having spoken for about half an hour but that muslims do muslims actually do good things for because of islam but this is so now it's clear but, okay but this now we want to talk about muslims doing doing bad things allegedly because but, of islam let's talk about that but this is a good discussion though right yes like, absolutely like, i'm i'm very happy about right. this discussion. and i'm not being getting rude, somewhere. i'm not being rude or anything I, I i i hope i'm not being rude as no, well no you're not okay, okay. thank you yeah. so let's talk about some other connections right. we have clearly made a connection successfully between islam and muslim actions right. good you. actions okay. charity okay huge amounts of okay. charity done by muslims globally because of islam so we, we made that connection very clearly now from this day on you will now tell people that islam teaches good things and muslims therefore do those good things because of islam but you're ignoring my second part which is fine no, we're not discussing the second part okay but that, okay. i think the second part was important it but is important right. but my my job is to show you that islam teaches good things and muslims do them okay. now We were right, talking about the second the, part. Yeah, let's go to the second yeah. part. Okay. So, I don't know there are many examples, but let's go with the kill, killing of apostates. Killing of apostates, okay. Right. Is that something that uh, Islam teaches that people that leave Islam should be killed because they left Islam? Okay. Killing of apostates is something within the domain of Islam. Did you know that? Yes. Right? Okay. Is that okay? Who, First of all, who is an apostate? I am an apostate. Okay, but who is an apostate? What is an apostate? Somebody, an, a, a, somebody that, that leaves us long. No, that's not an apostate. What? That's not an apostate. Technically, in Islam, that's not an apostate. So the hadith, to, to, to him, the hadith specifically says that yeah. the, somebody that has converted to Islam and leaves us long, yeah, they should be killed. In okay, this portion, how would how would Joe or Tom or George, how would they know that someone has left islam they announce it publicly okay so when they announce it publicly what are they trying to achieve an apostate who announces it publicly what is he or she trying to achieve by announcing it publicly to in a muslim domain to spread his ideas for example okay to spread his or her ideas mm -hmm. and the law forbids it the law says you cannot spread such ideas for example in britain in britain it is not allowed to spread certain ideas you go to jail you stand if i stand here today and is i say x y and z do you get beheaded for it yes i get burnt alive in britain by britain burnt alive yes burnt alive right now today today you got attack for uh, wait they burn you alive in britain yes it's as a law in syria in syria no here in britain wait 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 in syria British jets drowned living people they burned them alive they shredded them for what political apostasy because these these people who went to fight in Syria were as were apostates they were political apostates from the British system and British prime minister chose to kill them extrajudicially without a trial without without a lawyer without a case They were bombed in Syria. Okay. I'm not saying whether this was wrong or right. Actually, the killing, I disagree. I believe even Hitler deserved a trial. I believe in a civilized society where people are accused of crimes, they deserve a fair trial. We, we both agree, right? So killing anyone extrajudicially is uncivilized barbaric. This is what Britain does today. America does it today. Well, okay. Why are we talking so, about what Britain does though? I'm talking about Islam, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm saying certain countries do it in in different ways. But we're so, not judging God by what countries do, right? So, so certain societies, for example, they have come to agree on certain philosophical ideas. Like in Britain, uh, I think the British Prime Minister wasn't acting alone. He had uh, a bunch of people behind him who agreed with his philosophy that we should actually kill these. uh people like mosquitoes we should kill them we should not give them trial we should not put them in the dock we should not give them the respect of having a lawyer we should kill them so therefore action was carried out so they're so, wrong 
They're no, wrong. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Who are you to say that? They, they have a parliament. They have chosen a prime minister. The prime minister has decided that he wants to do this. And whether he's right or wrong, the community, uh, the intelligent people, the educated people, the representatives of people, chosen by people, have come to conclude that they want to do this action. Who are you to tell them they're wrong? By your humanist standard, what they did was right. Well, how do we get here? We're, we're talking about whether it's okay to kill ex-Muslims or not. No, 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 no. I'm trying changing, to give you an example. Are you changing it no, to No, because breaking certain laws, breaking certain laws in a, in a society, if you know the laws, then you're putting your life in danger. If there is, if there's a society and it has made certain laws, for example... Do you believe in unjust laws? Do you believe there okay. could be unjust laws? Okay. Now we're talking. So let's say there are two groups of people. One group says this law is unjust. The other one says no, it is just. Right? And who do we listen to? The people that are making more sense. The people that are coming out. How do? How do? They both. They both claiming to make sense. Okay. They, they both claim. One group is saying we make sense. Well, this is the other, a, this the, is the point of my question. Okay. Yeah. We're asking which laws are better for human beings, for our fellow human beings. I agree. And my question is that: Do you think the who, law? Who decides? I'm who decides? I'm asking your opinion. Whether do you think the law that says that we should kill people that leave Islam no, is the just no law, law? There's no law in Islam that says that. It's a hadith. Listen, you still don't get the point. We went step by step. We show, I showed you step by step that an apostate is someone who comes publicly, announces his apostasy with an intention to spread anarchy, uh, with an intention to get other apostles. Islam is a political faith. Did you know that? that what wait, saying? wait. Islam is a political faith. Did you know yes, that? Yes, I know that. Okay. Islam, politics, Islam, Islam is politics, right? right? So when you come in public and speak against the state in that way that you want people to leave Islam and follow that person and cause a problem, cause some kind of disturbance, public social disturbance, then there is a law. The law does not allow it. Wait, wait, wait. I'm trying to explain something to you, right? This is how the Islamic jurists have explained it, right? Right. Now, if you decided to be an apostate, let's say, at home, you're sitting in your living room in a state, a Muslim, for example, in a Muslim state, where, like all other countries, there is a law in place, right? And by the way, this law produced one of the greatest civilizations in human history. One of the greatest, what we call the Muslim civilization. All the libraries, all our scientists, all our philosophers, all our poets, all our universities, all our technological or scientific advancement was was a was a product of this law called the Sharia law. So this law created a, an amazing model in the past where Jews, Muslims, and Christians are coexisting. So we're talking about that particular law. The Muslims choose to follow that law um, word by word because they believe. This law is good for humanity. This law is good for our well-being. Right. This law produces good results because we have this example for over a thousand years. Muslims had this civilization. Show us anything like that, we will follow it. Okay. Right? Now, a particular clause of that law states X, Y, and Z. Muslims take the law holistically. They don't take one clause and say, this clause doesn't make sense, therefore we will make the entire law redundant. No, they take the law entirely and they apply it because they follow this wisdom that when the law is applied entirely, that's when it produces results. If you apply it partially or if you mix it up with other laws, it doesn't work. So now, having explained that, uh, if, a per, uh, if a person wants to break a law in a Muslim state, who is at fault? Would you, would you commit a crime in Britain, even though you don't agree with the law, for example? There's a law that you cannot do X, Y, and Z. Well, would, you, would you break the law, willingly? I'm, I'm not brave enough, but if it's an unjust law, and somebody breaks it to then make it's your, your point... No, it then it's Ro your fault. Rosa Park. Sorry? Rosa Park, do you think they should have sent him the back of the bus? I agree. That's a just, you I, break the unjust law. Okay, to, okay, to, to, okay. I'm not as brave as that woman. Okay. But if it's an unjust law, you break it for the sake of other people. Okay. 
Let's say. But let me make my yeah. point, okay? okay yes. Because there's two things that you just said, right? And then let me. So, so what? what no, let me. Let you say. Let, let's, let's, you, you, use, you, you use the noble. You use the noble example. Rosa Parks. Four minutes. Okay. Okay. Ten seconds. You made. You made. You made. Two, the, the part about publicly saying that you have left Islam, that's not in the hadith. The hadith specifically mentions that if you leave Islam, if you are a Muslim and you leave Islam... How, how do you know someone leaves Islam? Okay, look, I'm just saying you're... No, your point is redundant. I didn't... How, how I didn't, do you know someone leaves did Islam? I, did, did, I I did, I interrupt, did I interrupt you when I was... No, no, but I'm asking. I'm asking. No, it's yes, a conversation. You're asking, but, but I let you, when I tried to interrupt you... Can you like, explain how, how, do, how do you know someone left Islam? I just, I'm just making the point that the hadith itself didn't clarify. I'm just pointing that out. The hadith itself... No, it does. The hadith itself says that if somebody was a Muslim and they left Islam... No, hadith explains can it. Can I just say... Right? You added them, them come publicly and say, and you said to them they're trying to cause anarchy, right? The hadith itself doesn't say if they're trying to cause anarchy. It just specifically says they left this law. Okay? That they should that they should be punished, that they should be punished by death. That's what the hadith said. Another another point that you had, you mentioned is that no the second point that I want to make is that basically what you just did, and you I want you to acknowledge that. You, with all all of what you said, you basically said that it's justifiable with all the reasoning that you gave. I just want you to acknowledge on camera saying that you think there's justifiable to kill people for publicly mentioning their ideas. Okay. You think that there's you I'm are saying, saying you are saying there are situations saying, you are saying there are situations that that's justifiable to execute somebody for just announcing that they don't believe in something. Okay, I am saying a government has the right to carry out legal legal penalties on anyone or against anyone who breaks the law. What's wrong with that statement? It's an unjust law. Okay, fine. No, no, you think it's an unjust law. Mm -hmm. I, I accept that. Okay. There may be a million people who may who may think it's a just law. Do you okay. think it's just? Sorry? Do you think it's just? To I believe... To kill a Palestinian. Uh, I, what do you, no, you think no, it's no, 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 no. Okay, wait. The way... You see, the question is loaded. This is a loaded question. When you ask this question, you throw a lot of things with the question. I'm trying to explain the practicality of the law. So that you understand, a lot of people don't think about the practical side of the right, law. Right, I'm just saying, right? said he would okay. break an unjust no, law, so no, he no, made a determination. No, no. He thought you, it was okay. unjust. Now, 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 let, let me put a question to you. Let me put a question to you. Sure. Okay. In a society, someone comes out and causes anarchy. Right? Yeah. And the law uh, doesn't allow anarchy. Right. Right? Yeah. Is the government in its right to... Uh, it's not the same to, thing. Wait, 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 wait. Let's lead okay, step by step, step by step. If someone is breaking the law by inciting anarchy, okay, inciting violence or rebellion or anything like that, yep. does the government have the right to take action against such people? Yes, Simple. yes but the punishment yes, should yes. be just. Okay, the yes. punishment, like, if yes. someone jaywalks, you should, yes. you should yes. execute them. Yes. You find okay. them. Now, the, an the answer to your question is yes. Yes. Absolutely. Now, in certain societies, yes. anarchy is defined differently. You as an atheist, are you an atheist? Yes. Okay. You and you as an atheist, what's your definition of anarchy? Give it to me. My definition of anarchy? Yeah. I don't know. No control. Sorry. Lack of control. Uh, who like, defines it? Who defines no control? I don't know. I, I don't know why you brought up anarchy. Look, to be honest. You, you know humans differ. Yes, absolutely. You, humans have different philosophies. Yes. They have different thinking. Yes. And so I'm this asking, is something. Do you think it's this is something people like question. you fail to understand that this. I'm asking this, you a real simple question, though. Right? Like, now we change the law in France to ban the hijab. Do you think French Muslims shouldn't wear a hijab? No, I, I believe they should. They should either either leave France. Or they should not break the law. No, they should. Break Period. The Period. I'm consistent. If if a country bans the car for whatever, if for example, although so in China, oh, wait, let me. Muslims is that if they make that legal? I don't. I don't okay? agree with the Chinese. Uh, Uyghurs should leave at the first opportunity. They should leave China. They should, wait, 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 wait. Palestinians should, should Palestinians leave Israel? No, no. They continue the resistance. So, so double standard. Yes. Double yes. standard. No, 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 no. Palestinians, look, losing your land, right? Losing your land so is illegal. 
by all human standards. Same, wait, same, 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 same wait. thing with the Muslims in China. That's their land. Okay. The Muslim... Their land is not taken by the Chinese government. The Chinese. But you're wait, saying they wait. should leave. I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, if they do not have the power, if they do not have the power to resist, they should leave. Right. So okay. Chinese. Have the power oh, to by the way, there is no law in China hmm. as we speak to force people to sit in concentration camps. So Uyghurs are, if they're resisted, they're not breaking any law because there's no law in China currently, as I understand. If they make that law, yeah, yeah. If, if they, they make that law, Uyghurs have two options: to resist or to leave. In resistance, they will lose lives, they will lose the property, they will lose the land, they will cause devastation. Like Palestinians. Okay, wait, wait. Yeah. No, no, no. Right. Okay. They have the they have the option to do that. Right. The other option is to leave the land. Okay. Quran tells us clearly. When you are persecuted, leave, leave, go somewhere else where you have peace and justice, right? Therefore, therefore, no, of course, no, I mean, I mean, this is why we are here in the park to like, educate people, no, right? Nothing about fighting right. Back. Yeah. Now, it's all surrender. I didn't know that. What's that? What verse is that that it says that you're supposed to leave if you're being... Do you know? Yeah. Yes. I, mean, yes. Yes. I, can, I can show you the verse Please. where it says if you are persecuted, yeah. then go and uh, migrate. Yeah, emigrate to a land where there is peace and justice. Actually, really the Prophet himself commanded his companions to leave Mecca, their native city. So, where Palestin they were being persecuted. so Palestinians... He told them to leave. Go. So, Palestinians, so Palestinians should just no. leave. Yeah, yeah. If Palestinians feel... Right. Because you see the Meccans didn't have the power to resist. They didn't have the power. They would be massacred. So the Prophet told them to leave. Palestinians, if they feel they can resist successfully, so it's, so it's, they can launch a resistance and they can defend their land if, if from, uh, from being resist, taken away. If Muslims in Muslim majority countries feel they can resist, then you're okay with okay, them doing that. I'm saying if ex-Muslims... <laughs> uh, yeah, listen to me now carefully. Ex-Muslims in a Muslim country have two options, right? Either they remain silently and don't break the law. When, uh, uh, when a country is governed by the law, Islamic law, most Muslim countries are not governed by the Islamic law, by the way, right? Or the second option is, Resist. They, they, sorry, they can leave and go to a country where they're free to do what they want, right? Third option is, launch a, a rebellion, fight against the government and see what happens. So any civilized person, any 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 person who's not a troublemaker, who doesn't want destruction, right? Who but, simply wants to exercise his personal right to express his freedom that he's not a Muslim, but would simply leave. Do you see? Do you see? Do you see how you break the law? Do you see? Like 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 in Britain, those people who want to incite violence, hatred, right? against let's say against they're spreading anarchy against against exactly. if let's say racist right wing activists like Tommy Robinson right he's inciting a lot of hatred against Muslims in particular right now a lot of people Sorry about this. No. A lot of people, a, a, a lot of people don't agree with them. There are some who dis, do agree with them. If they get strong enough, if they become a, so, such a huge power that they can change the law, they can change the system. Do it by all means. When that happens, I would advise the Muslims to leave because now, now bigots, murderers, killers, racist thugs have come to power. Leave. But in a Muslim in a Muslim land yeah. in a Muslim land, what a lot of people don't realize when they use this question of apostasy, <laughs> the assumption is that Muslims are 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 bloodthirsty. They're walking around with swords, looking for apostates to kill them. Wait, Thank what you. is the history of Islamic civilization? Number one, our civilization was. One of the most tolerant, compassionate, that's not gonna work. 
Okay. That's not going to work. Wait, what, what am I, what is, am I about to this say? Is, this is the what, second what I want. Listen, what you say? You're going to talk about how we are peaceful or whatever. Listen, it, it, wait, 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 it doesn't work in reality, man. This is the second week I've been here, the second week that I've been threatened what with do you physical think I was violence going to say? because I was an apostate. You said it's not going to work. Yeah. What do you think I was going to say? You're going to talk about it's the religion of peace and that there's got to no, be... No, no, and, and the no, word, no, no, no. You're going to give some verse. I was going to tell you. You're going to give some verse on how you're not allowed to be... I was not going to give you theory. Okay. I was going to give you an example. Right. Historically, of someone of, okay, sorry, right. Muslims, Muslims protected the Jewish people against definite extinction. Okay, is that this to be compelling? I don't. What do you mean? Like, for over, listen to me. Are you listening to yourself? Are you even listening to yourself? Yeah, yeah. For over a thousand years, yeah. Muslims protected the. The, the majority of the Jewish people, 90% of the Jewish people in the world were protected by the Muslims of over a thousand years. Do you know what that means? What? Do you understand? No, Do you know? I don't. Okay, let mean? me explain. That, that means the Jewish people exist yeah. today yeah. to a large extent because of Muslim protection. So what does that have to do with you today? Okay, now, this is I'm saying, this is something you... Do you, did you know that, first of all? You know about apostasy in the law, which is fine. Did you know this? No, I didn't know that. Didn't know. Why not? Why not? Your study, your study in Islam is very selective. It's not Islam. It's very focused. It's not you, Islam. It's Muslim. You have yes. been taught. You have been taught by yourself or by someone else. Let me, that, let me tell you my experience. It's not Islam. It's Muslims. If I tell people that I'm an apostate, or someone who's like, it's happened to me every week that I come here, two weeks in a row, I'll get threatened with physical violence by, by a fellow Muslim. Okay, 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 okay. wait. You, 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 wait, wait, wait. wait. You, are you an apostate? Yes. I, I have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have nothing, I have nothing but sympathy and love for you. Okay, I believe, I believe. I don't believe you're an apostate. That, that, I believe yeah. you didn't know about Islam okay, from, the, from the first. So you didn't know anything right. about Islam. Someone in this crowd wants to kick my ass right now. No, no, no. Right. Why? There's someone, someone here that wants to beat Why are you assuming? Because Why are you assuming No, because that? it literally happened Why to me. Why are you assuming It happened to me half an hour ago. Listen to me. Because because literally, Islam, I come from, a, I, I come from Pakistan. Yes. Show me the person who did that. I'm going to go and actually pray and come back. Okay, okay. I'll leave. No, no, bring the camera. I'm going to go and come back. I might be back this way. Ali, are you are you really claiming that they're not bad Muslims? Do you agree that they're oh, bad Muslims? There's anyone in the park. Right. See, as this guy, he was there. He was threatening yeah. him. You him. No, he's saying he was there. It wasn't, it wasn't me. No, no, you, it wasn't no, him. He, he was, was there. He was there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, he, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Because I don't know. I came up to so I don't know. Oh, okay. Because okay. I want to find out if it was because he left Islam or the guy was being violent. Because the park is full of violent people. Yeah. yeah? But you, you, if you're making the connection, it was because of Islam. I want to know. Okay. So I want to speak yeah. to that guy. If he said that like, he's having a go at you because he cannot touch you, why? Because Islamically, number one, a it's, it's uh, capital punishment for a mm. I have. I'm telling you proudly. There's capital punishment for an apostate. The rules and regulations, it's not done by a group of Muslims walking. Who's an apostate? Let's kill him. Islam doesn't work like the jungle. There's a Sharia system that the person gets judged. It's not, hey, oh, I'm you left wait, Islam. Wait, wait. Somebody you caught stealing. It doesn't work like that. So, therefore, that person doing that, you're going against the Sharia because number one, but, we live in this state. Yeah. We have a passport that says we abide by the laws of this land. Number two, even if you wasn't apostate, mm. They can't come and execute you. It doesn't work like that. Right. Number one, number two, number two. The evidence that we use from I think Ibn, Ibn Al Qayyim, Rahimallah, mm. is the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. When the pagan Arabs, what did they say to the Prophet? When people apostate, you send them back to us. Mm. Yes? Okay. This doesn't mean abrogated. Right. What that means is this yeah. if you live in an Islamic country and you have an agreement with a non Islamic country that you want to leave Islam, mm. we give you a ticket. Bye -bye. So brother, if someone threatens me, I'm going to tell them to you then. I'm no, say, no one Ali is Dawa. allowed to threaten you because yeah. it's against the Sharia. Okay, but, uh, Show me. I was, but I'll just say, in my experience, right, I've been here no, only no, no, two no. weeks of my life, Show and me. both times I got threatened. <coughs> If people Show told me, me if, like, if I see you on Edgeware Road, no, 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 like, no, like, no. you're fine Show here, me the but person, you're dead out No, no, no. Here. Show me the person, yeah. anyone that threatens you, because there's this fake, I'm sorry, I'm not saying you, I'm not saying the experiences. Sure. But there's this whole narrative going around of, 
ex-Muslims, their lives are threatened. Look, man, I, I spoke to a lot of ex-Muslims. Mm. The Sharia tells me I live in this land. They can do whatever. They can walk around all day with ex-Muslim placards. Yeah. I don't care. It doesn't affect my... Because my religion is not that weak that a few ex-Muslims are going to come and we're going to be like, oh I my like God. I like your message. Yeah, I like, like it. it. Yeah. 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 Say it louder. No, no, no. This is fucking no, no. That's no. good, that's good. Very yeah. simple. The Sharia never condones. That's why I said, show me that guy. Yeah. Because I will say to him, did you threaten this guy mm. because of that or something else? Because, bro, I get threatened. Right. I was even trying to switch on me, yeah? Mm. So I want to know the reason. Yeah, see, show me him. Because I'll tell you Ali, exactly what happened. I guarantee you, he was looking for it because I did not speak but to did him. Did he say Islam or he was looking for trouble? No, I, I, I walked by him and he said, "Hey, are you Pakistani?" Yeah. And I said, "Yes." Yeah. And he goes, "Are you Muslim?" And I said, "No." Yeah. He goes, "Why?" I said, "Man, I don't want to explain it to you." Yeah. And he goes, "I'm asking you why." And, it, and and he just wouldn't let it go. Wouldn't let it go. Okay. And I said, "Listen, I don't want to talk to you okay. about it." Yeah. He kept Let's going. Go back. Find, 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 find me him. I'm yeah. here. Please show me. Him. Okay. Thanks, Alex. Well, that was a very fast prayer. So, so the question still stands. <laughs> you can I mean, join it before you do. There's no. Well, you sit. You sit. You sit. Oh, so, yeah, so, yeah. so the point I was making was earlier that you have misconceptions about Islam, or you you have you have a very narrow, selective view on Islam. You choose to look on Islam. What is my narrow, selective view? I don't know what you're talking. Look how much progress we're making. Right? Isn't this awesome? It is awesome. It's turning its back on religion. I mean, this is some good news finally because we're losing. Here's the thing, but don't be content with this because there, let me tell you exactly what we're winning and what we're losing. Okay, we're losing in politics. We're winning in demographics. Okay, we're winning in demographics as in atheism is is on the rise. We are more and more people are abandoning religion. But we're losing every, almost everywhere when it comes to the influence of religion, okay? In Israel, in Indonesia, in Malaysia, in Pakistan, in India, in Poland, right? In the United States, religion is becoming more influential and it's governing uh, our lives more than before, even though we're winning in demographics. Why? Because we don't organize, okay? Because we don't get together and try to get shit done because a lot of you idiots tell me that hey if we get together and try to do stuff then we're becoming too much like a religion what great job now you're giving the power of community and organizing to the religion and you're washing your hands off of it and you're wondering why is it that the religion is becoming controlling everything because they know how to get shit done right because they organize they're clever in politics they're like oh we don't want to get involved with politics we'll just give them all the politics then and when you're wondering why abortion is becoming illegal again or why India is becoming more he Hindu extremist again or why Poland is arresting people because they uh, insulted Mother Mary because you because a lot of you atheists are being idiots and think that we can can't get together and do shit because it's because only religious people can do that apparently because if we if we create communities Oh, now we look too much like a religion. So you are deciding that religions have a monopoly over getting shit done, over get creating communities, over working together. Really? You think only, you have to be religious to, pro to create a community? And this is why we, we say like Atheist Republic is now a political movement. And this is why we're telling you that, you know, th we need to get political. We need to be active. We need to we need to provide communities. You don't like Atheist Republic as a community? Go join another community. But do create atheist communities. Create a voice. Create a counterattack to these influences. We're winning the demo. You know we are growing demographically. But even in Arab countries where atheism is on the rise, anti-atheist religion is also on the, on the rise. Religious people are becoming in Israel. Most people in Israel are secular, are not orthodox religious, not jobs in Israel. But look, orthodox Jewish people are taking over their politics. Why? Because they're clever. They, they, the uh, Muslims are clever. The Christians are clever. The Jews are clever. The Hindus are clever. They know how to play politics and they will take over your lives. Even if you have all the demographics in your favor. You have to, you have to learn how to do these things. You can't just let them... 
you can't just give up on politics and community and all of this stuff because like you uh, it reminds you of religion if we say like hey religious people don't have a monopoly over over morality we can't make them pretend like they own morality well why are you letting them pretend like they own communities if you're like, oh, if we if we if we try to provide a community, we or try to organize, we're a religion. Like it, by that standards, my study group in college was also a religion. It's such a stupid argument. I never understood that. Nobody has ever been able to explain that to me. Why they think that is too much like a religion? Okay, demographic. Oh, okay, you are oh. awesome for everything that you just said, and I want to take that piece out and post that video like everywhere because it is so it is so frustrating. And everything that we do, everything, nobody wants to to get involved. Everyone says, "Oh, look at you! You're more like a church." We're trying to do a protest to save a man in Iran. Look at you guys unifying, uh, getting money. You're a church, and it's it's frustrating so i love everything you just said i was almost in tears and i'm stealing this clip yeah okay thank you <laughs> uh yeah anyways even guys a even if you don't like atheist republic it's fine there's many others but don't let them win they're winning i promise you they're winning they're winning everywhere okay they're winning because good don't if you don't want to donate to Aces Republic, we're we're doing sh a shit ton right now. Okay, we're becoming a political organization. We're getting shit done. But if you don't like what we do, donate to Freedom from Religion Foundation. Donate to American Atheists. Right. Donate to some. You know these these. You have no idea how much resources these Muslim communities have. Right. They have oil money behind them. What they're doing. Okay. They know they're playing the social media game. They know what they're doing. You don't understand the resources the Christian communities have. You've seen the churches they built. We are we are winning the demographic game with so much so little resources. Imagine what we could do. Like people are running away from Iran and they're going to uh, you know to to Greece and they they're pretending to be Christian because the churches are there for them. They're hiring lawyers because they know if they're Christian there was going to be somebody to help the refugees. You know the atheist refugees when they show up in other countries they have nothing. They have nobody. There's nobody there waiting for them the other side we have atheist refugees in Germany starting they have zero donations you go donate to atheist refugees in Germany they're helping the ex-muslims so that they don't have to go pretend to be Christian so for because the Christians are there for their for their crew they're waiting for them to somebody say oh, I'm Christian the Muslims are attacking me you know how many churches are supporting them because they have the resources we have nothing I like, oh, if we donate to you, you're like a church now. Well, we want to be like a church because we need resources. They are winning the war. Okay, they're winning the ideological war. This is the thing that they know how to play. We want to be, if, if being, if by, if being like a church, do you mean by being for, a, being there for atheists when they need us? Being for people, being for atheists when they're attacked? Being where, for atheists when they're under, under threat and they're being discriminated against then yeah we want to do that because the christians and the muslims and the jews and the hindus they got that right they're there for each other when somebody is attacking them us atheists we're not there for each other we're not there for each other we want to be there for each other atheists are under attack in many places if they were christians their voices would be heard if they were jews their voices would be heard if they were muslims their voices would be heard but they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, 
staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.